It's Fitter Friday here, Second Swing Minnetonka. I'm Thomas Campbell, here with fellow fitter James Tracy. Morning, my friend. How are you? Doing good. Good, man. Here to talk about, um, essentially, fairy woods, utilities, hybrids, how they work in the bag. Talk about kind of gapping through the bag, why we should play maybe a hybrid, why we may should play a driving iron, and where maybe our longest iron should be in our bag. Yeah, a t very tough part from a fitting standpoint to get right. You know, it's ultimately whether you're a competitive player or you're a weekend warrior, that's the area of your bag where you spend the least amount of time practicing typically. You don't run into those shots as often. And they're just the most challenging. I mean, even look on the PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, their proximity to the hole, the greens and regulation from those yardages with those clubs, they're difficult. Um, so there's a lot of options that you have. I think the biggest thing to think about is, you know, not necessarily coming into a purchase or a fitting thinking, I need a four hybrid, I need a five wood, I need a three iron. It's thinking about, I need a 200 yard golf club. I need a 215 yard golf club. Think about the gap that you're trying to create. You know, when we do an iron fitting, for example, and we build out a seven iron, we're building out a set. Well, we're going to extrapolate out how far we think the six and the five and the four iron are going to go. And then we have that discussion. Hey, at what yardage do we want to start to think about design where we go away from your seven iron model and in that longest iron or when we transition from irons to our next club type, what's the smart break there so what you know for, for me it's trajectory yep. you know are you going to be able to hold the green with the four iron you know so we use terms like landing angle um, peak height or just the golfer's experience I, I know I never I, this is one part three I play on my five iron just I, I can never hold the green with it yeah you, you know? talk about gapping so yeah. you were talking about whether it's 200 to 10 essentially but I really like to focus on carry distance a lot too, as For opposed sure. to the total distance. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, people might say, oh, I do hit my five iron 210, but if it's only carrying 180 and running out 30 yards, the green's not, lot, not big enough to hold that green. Yeah. So if you're hitting a shot into it uh, with a very low trajectory or not much peak height, essentially it's, you know, it's not gonna hold that green. So that's why leaning towards something that's gonna be, give you a little bit more luxury to get the ball up in the air and stay high all the way through the set it's always a good option. So I know right. gapping's perfect, but we want to make sure that we get that peak height to stay constant through the bag so the ball lands on the green consistently. Correct. Yep. I mean, it, in reality, a 19 degree long iron, a 19 degree hybrid, a 19 degree fairway wood, they all might go similar distances total. Yep. But from a carry distance standpoint, and from a stopping power landing angle standpoint, and from a ball flight standpoint, they're going to be completely different. So it's also trying to figure out what that player really needs in order to hit that shot correctly. If it's a player that hits the ball really high with their irons and tends to draw the ball, hook the ball, is their miss. And even if they don't have a ton of confidence in their iron play, a hybrid might be tough because, well, what's a hybrid gonna do? A hybrid's gonna go higher than their longest Might go iron. further left. Also, might go yep. further left. So, yep. you know, even though the conventional wisdom is, well, I, don't, I don't feel very confident in my longer irons, I'm thinking about a hybrid, I'm thinking about a five wood, but if we see an incredibly high trajectory in that left ball flight for a right-handed player, you know, sometimes you're gonna have a hard time finding a hybrid or a fairway wood that gives you that optimal window. So that's where you brought up like a driving iron or some type of combo set, some type of you know, higher MOI, three, four iron type of setup might work really well for a player that already has the requisite height and has a miss that you know a hybrid and a fairway might not help solve. It's a problem that those two clubs might not work really well with. Um, same thing for you know at that part in your bag. How many greens are you going into with that type of club? And you know, the yardages that a lot of us play. You know, if you're hitting five woods into par fours, um, you, you, one you're probably playing too far yeah. back <laughs> uh, from the tee. Uh, you probably should move up a tee box. Uh, that's another discussion we can get into. <laughs> but secondly, you know, it's, it's how you're using those clubs, whether it's always into the green or if they're just a setup club. You know, some players might have more confidence on a second shot on a par five when they know they're not going to get to the green. I just need something I can hit 200 yards to set up my third shot. I want something on my long par threes that I know I can carry 180 yards but has a chance of actually holding the green as opposed to trying to sting a three iron out there. Um, you know, for that same type of shot. So those are also things that in a fitting, we're asking the player. Not only do we want to create the right gaps, 
but we also want to create the right confidence in your tool from that yardage that you're going to be able to execute the type of shot that you need. Um, and then ultimately, the trajectory piece is huge, right? I mean, that's where a lot of times we can help solve that issue. If we see symptoms in a seven iron or the middle part of your iron set where, you know, your landing angle is starting to get close to 40 degrees or less. Well, we know you're going to struggle to hold greens with any iron lower lofted than that. Correct. So we start thinking hybrid now boosts your apex. It increases your landing angle. Now you have a better chance of holding the green. So sometimes it's just purely trajectory. It's not even a poor ball striker or a, a miss hit or a confidence thing. It's just providing them the requisite height to actually hold the green from that yardage. Yep. It also comes down to what golf course you may play as well. So sure. for, for example, you know, I play a lot of different golf courses. I probably have about 16 or 17 clubs to really choose from. I've got fairy woods, I've got hybrids, I've got driving irons, and I've got a, a longer iron. So it really depends on the type of shots you're trying to hit. If you're trying to hit it low, if there's a golf course that's, you know, you, that you need to hit a few long, essentially driving irons off, off the tee, you might want to obviously have a driving iron in your bag. Mm -hmm. If you essentially are trying to land it softly on the green on par fives that you're trying to reach into with say 240 yards away, I know that's my hybrid number. Yep. It's going to land softer as opposed to hitting a penetrated three iron into the green. So Correct. it really depends on the golf course that you play a lot too. 100%. And I think the other advantage with newer technology is those hybrids and those fairy woods, especially for guys like you that play a lot of courses, you can re-engineer them to go different yardage, do different things. You know, Correct. whereas yep. a three iron is not as versatile. You know, you can, yeah, you can put on a loft and line machine, but it's not always something you can do in the parking lot. You know, whereas in a hybrid or a fairway wood scenario, based on the course and the conditions, you have a little bit of flexibility there to create a different gap or create a bit different ball flight based on how you're playing. So there's another advantage in just the extra option that you might have by going with an adjustable hybrid or fairway wood for that type of shot as well. Yeah. End of the day comes back to gapping. Gapping mm -hmm. is probably the most important thing, making sure we have a consistent gap from essentially driver all the way through our irons. Yeah. So you need to have something that's going to be in between driver, three wood, Mm -hmm. and then those irons. So that's important to have those, those clubs. Yeah, so I think when you come in or you're looking at purchasing a club for that area of your bag, be thinking less about what's on the bottom of the club, whether it says three or four or five. Be thinking more about what's the yardage you want that club to be. What's my, that's gonna be my 215 club. That's gonna be my 190 club. That's gonna be my 245 club. And that'll help you and the fitter figure out what type of club is best to create that gap and to create the ball flight and confidence that you want from that yardage. <laughs>